Every revolutionist path begins with a realization that the world we have built is fundamentally unjust and that human society must change. And if I want to see that change, then I, myself, must act to change it. For all of our loathing of capitalism, we are all too often completely unable to see how deeply we, ourselves, are affected from having lived our entire lives under capitalism. We are so emboldened by a realization that things could be better, and so intoxicated by the dream of building a better world, that we overlook our own false consciousness, adherence to elements of bourgeois civil society, which undermine our movements and prevent us from achieving our revolutionary ambitions. Activists must recognize the damage of internal racism, the politics which support it, and how to deal with it, and then act swiftly and forcefully, sometimes even ruthlessly. The truth is that most anti-racist white radicals cannot bring themselves to bring the needed cold-blooded efficiency and commitment to the task. They are lured away from their task by friendships with other white people in the group, their fear of being excluded or shunned, lack of commitment to the struggle, lack of consistent support of peoples of color, and compromising or selling out to their own deep-seated racism and political opportunism. Capitalist society stifles collectivism at every level here to distrust each other, compete with each other, and demean each other at every turn. In our schools, in our workplaces, and in the mass media which we consume every day of our lives, we are conditioned into a sort of mass solipsism. How many pissing contests have we witnessed on the left over who's read more theory, or who's done more practice, or who is and isn't qualified to be part of the revolution? How much time do we waste going on witch hunts to determine who counts as truly working class, or pitting one form of oppression against another instead of trying to grasp how they might intersect. How much of our so-called political discourse is really just thinly veiled consumer culture in which we bicker about individual personalities who in the grand scheme of things mean nothing and are all but irrelevant in wider society. It's easy to feel depressed and hopeless when we realize how flawed and inefficient we as revolutionists might be thanks to the deep impact which capitalism has had on all of us. When I look at all the unnecessary infighting and competition in leftist spaces, it can be overwhelming. We have such a long way to go. Vast fortunes, billions upon billions of dollars have been expended to implant capitalist ideology deep in your psyche from the moment you were born up until this moment. If you think you are immune, if you think you have cast off the mental chain and freed yourself from the prison in your mind, you are almost certainly fooling yourself. Sure, the Western left is deeply flawed and broken, and we have a long way to go and a lot of growing up to do, but this just means that we have a tremendous amount of unrealized potential. If we do manage to erode the false consciousness within ourselves, to dissolve the individualistic and competitive mindsets which plague all of us, and to overcome our differences, to work towards common goals, just think of what we might be able to accomplish. Just as we have nothing to lose but our chains, we only really have one direction in which we can head, and that's up. As undeveloped as we are, we have so much potential for growth, and that gives me hope that we might be able to align our dreams with reality, dissolve that false consciousness, and find a path forward to victory. This is Non-Compete. Thanks for watching.